आई होप यू आर ऑल फाइन इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट सम प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द एंजाइम्स हाउ दे प्ले रोल इन द इन कैटलाइजिंग द रिएक्शन दैट आर ग्रीन इन साइड द बॉडी फॉर एग्जाम्पल मेटाबोलिक रिएक्शन और रेस्पिरेटरी रिएक्शन एंड वी नो दैट इंजाइम्स आर द प्रोटीन कैटलिस्ट दे आर मेड अप ऑफ प्रोटीन एंड द कैटलाइज द रेट ऑफ अ रिएक्शन द विलोसिटी ऑफ अ केमिकल रिएक्शन एंड दे आर नॉट कंज्यूम ड्यूरिंग द रिएक्शन मीन्स दे आर नॉट यूटिलाइज ड्यूरिंग अ केमिकल रिएक्शन वी नो डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ आर एन ए प्रेजेंट इन द सेल दैट इज एम आर एन ए ट्रांसफर आर एन ए और एमजोमल आर एन ए बट देर इज एनदर टाइप ऑफ आर एन ए दैट एक्ट एज एनजाइम एंड सच आर एन ए विच एक्ट एज अ कैटलिस्ट एज एन इंजाइम आर कॉल्ड राइबोजाइम्स देर आर सम प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ बायोलॉजिकल कैटलिस्ट वी नो दैट इंजाइम इज अ बायोलॉजिकल कैटलिस्ट बिकॉज इट इज कैटलाइजिंग द रिएक्शन दैट अकर इन अ लिविंग बॉडी दैट अकर इन अ लिविंग सेल so they behave like a catalyst and share some properties with the chemical catalyst that are utilized in a chemical reaction in the laboratory these properties include enzymes like the catalyst are neither consumed nor produced during the course of a chemical reaction that is enzyme do speed up the chemical reaction but they themselves are not consumed during the reaction uh, the next thing is that enzymes do not play role in the reaction to take place means they do they do not initiate a chemical reaction but they speed up the rate of a chemical reaction if they were not used the rate of the reaction will be slow the reaction will proceed in much slower rate in their absence but they do not cause the reaction to take place they do not start they do not initiate a chemical reaction they alter the rate but not the equilibrium constant and we all know that what is equilibrium constant when the concentration of reactants are equal to the concentration of the products then the equilibrium is called equilibrium constant of the reaction that they catalyze we know that what is equilibrium constant equilibrium constant is the concentration of products over concentration of reactants when the reaction reaches at such a point when the concentration of products becomes equal to the concentration of reactants then the constant is called equilibrium constant so the enzyme do not change the equilibrium constant it just speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction so these were the some properties which uh, the biological catalyst enzymes share with the chemical catalyst now we will discuss the differences between the enzymes and a chemical catalyst uh, the differences include number 1 enzymes are protein enzymes are made up of protein but the chem- catalyst which are, which are used in the laboratory are not made up of proteins enzymes are highly specific and produced only the expected products from the given reactants or the substrate we know that the reactant with which an enzyme reacts is called its substrate and every enzyme has a specific substrate so enzymes will not react with any of the substrate it will react with only a specific substrate which provide it a specificity so we can say that enzymes are highly specific and produce only the expected product from the given reactants or substrate that is there is no side reaction enzymes may show high specificity towards one substrate or a group of substrate that is a that is called broad specificity so we can say that enzymes exhibit broad specificity but the substrate on which they show broad specificity of our same types they may belong to same family they may belong to same compounds or compound with same characteristics they use more than one substrate that is if we say the enzyme is having broad specificity so we can say that they are using more than one substrate we have already discussed that enzyme work in a specific environment enzyme work in specific conditions like ph enzyme usually function within within a moderate ph and temperature range means within a small or a peculiar ph range and temperature enzymes can work efficiently and that ph and that temperature is called optimum ph or optimum temperature in this figure you can uh, you can see a graph showing the activity of enzyme with the increase in ph as the ph is increasing as the ph is increasing the activity of enzyme is also increasing but up to a certain level here comes a level when the enzyme shows its maximum activity and that corresponding ph is called its optimum ph let's say 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is 2. 
approximately 2.78 pH so we can say that this is the optimum pH for that enzyme so what is the optimum pH the pH at which the enzyme shows its maximum activity and after that pH the activity of enzyme is further decreased because the enzyme is denatured in the same way we can see that enzyme reacts perfectly enzyme show its maximum activity at a temperature called its optimum temperature here the enzyme activity is increasing and here the temperature is increasing and the graph shows that when the temperature is increased the rate of enzyme catalyzed reaction also increases up to a certain limit so this is the maximum enzyme activity and the corresponding temperature is called optimum temperature at the temperature at which the enzyme is showing its maximum activity and we know that for human body 37 degrees centigrade is the optimum temperature for certain enzymes after that the enzyme if the temperature is increased the enzyme will be denatured because we know that enzymes are made up of proteins and proteins are degraded at high temperature so this is the optimum temperature for the enzyme so enzymes work under a specific temperature and pH range enzymes show two basic functions in the biological system that is they are catalytic and they are regulating either they catalyze a chemical reaction or they regulate a chemical reaction that is taking place inside the body so we say these reactions as biological reactions so now we will discuss about the chemical efficiency what is chemical efficiency the rate at which the enzyme can speed up a chemical reaction or how faster an enzyme can speed up a chemical reaction most enzyme catalyzed reactions are highly efficient proceeding from 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 8 times faster than the uncatalyzed reaction so we can say that simply an enzyme can speed up a chemical reaction up to 10 to the power 3 or 10 to the power 8 times faster than the normal rate now we will discuss about the turnover number what is the turnover number Typically, each enzyme molecule is capable of transforming 100 to 1000 of the substrates into product each second. That is, in one second, an enzyme can transform 100 to 1000 of the substrate into the product. So, the number of molecules or substrate converted to product per enzyme molecule is called its turnover number. So, we discussed about the catalytic efficiency. Now, we will see about the regulation, how enzymes are playing role in the regulation. Enzyme activity can be regulated, that is we can activate an enzyme or inhibit an enzyme. So the rate of the product formation responds to the need of the cell. When there is a need of a chemical reaction, the activity of enzyme will be activated. Or if the reaction rate has to be slowed down, the uh, enzyme will be inhibited by following a feedback inhibition process. So the next thing is about the measurement of enzyme activity how can we measure the activity of an enzyme that how efficiently an enzyme is working or how efficiently an enzyme is playing role in speeding over a chemical reaction so the first thing is the specific activity the specific activity is that how much substrate is transformed into product in one minute per milligram of enzyme under optimal conditions that is we are using one milligram of enzyme and the conditions are optimum and we will notice that in one minute how much of the substrate is converted into the product so the specific activity is usually expressed as micromole of the substrate the concentration of substrate transformed to product per minute per milligram of enzyme under optimal conditions of the measurement the no next thing is the turnover number the turnover number is the number of substrate molecules that are catalyzed that are metabolized per enzyme molecule per unit time within with units of per minute or per second means how much of the substrate is converted into the product per minute or per second using a unit of an enzyme so both specific activity and turnover number can measure the activity of an enzyme we can measure the activity of an enzyme by using specific activity and turnover number concepts now the next thing which we are going to discuss here is the enzyme classification that how we classify the enzyme enzymes are classified into six major classes and these classes are uh, made on the basis of the type of reaction they catalyzed 
and there are some several subclasses depending upon the specificity of a substrate. So these classes include oxidoreductases, transferases, hydrolases, lyases, isomerases and ligases. So what is the role of oxidoreductases? All of the enzymes that comes into this category they are all involved in the oxidation and reduction of a molecule the enzymes that that comes under transferases they play a role in transferring of a functional group from, from one molecule to the other that molecule can be amino or phosphate groups so the enzymes that transfer uh, that transfer phosphate group or amino group uh, for example from one molecule to other so they are called transferases. The enzymes that come under hydrolysis, as the name suggests, they catalyze the hydrolysis of the substrate. For example, the hydrolysis of the hydrolysis of ATP to ADP results in the production of energy. So the enzymes that transfer water, that is, they catalyze the hydrolysis of the substrate. They all come under hydrolysis. Then comes lyases. They add or remove the elements of water, ammonia or carbon dioxide to or from double bonds means they add a molecule to a double bond or they remove a molecule to form a double bond and these the molecules that they add or remove they include ammonia, carbon dioxide or water. The next major class is isomerases. We know that the isomers are the uh, compounds with same chemical formula but different arrangements so the name suggests that the isomerase are the enzymes that catalyze a reaction in which the rearrangement of atoms occur within a molecule that is they play a role in forming the isomers so isomerases catalyze rearrangement of atoms within a molecule the last class is the ligases the ligases functions in joining of two molecules overall there are six major classes in which the enzymes are divided depending upon the role they are playing so they include oxidoreductases for oxidation and reduction reactions transferases for the transfer of functional group hydrolases for the transfer of molecule that is water and for the uh, in other words, for the hydrolysis of a substrate using a water molecule. Lyases that adds or removes a double bond and resulting in removing or addition of a double bond. Isomerases that functions in rearrangements of atoms within a molecule. And finally, the ligases that join. See the six major classes of enzyme along with their examples and the substrates. Out of six major classes, the first class is the oxidoreductases that involves the oxidation and reduction of a molecule. We know that oxid oxidation is the addition of oxygen and reduction is the removal of oxygen. Oxidation is the removal of hydrogen and reduction is the addition of hydrogen. Oxidation involves the loss of electron and reduction involves the gain of electron. So, as oxidation involves the loss of electron, it results in increase in valency and reduction in results in decrease in the valency or the charge. The subclass oxidases uses oxygen as an electron acceptor but do not incorporate it into, into the substrate. Dehydrogenases use molecules other than oxygen that is NAD plus as an electron acceptor. Oxygenases directly incorporate oxygen into the substrate and peroxidases uses hydrogen peroxide as an electron acceptor. All these subclasses are involved in either oxidation or reduction of the substrate. The next class is the transferase. As we know that transferase results in the transfer of molecule from one substrate to the other substrate. As in the given reaction, you can see that a is bonded to B. When it reacts with C, A now B is bonded with C. So the, the substrate B is transferred from A to C. The subclass methyl transferase transfers one carbon unit that is methyl group 
between the substrates. The next subclass, amino transferases, transfer amino group from one amino acid to the ketoid acids. As the name suggests, kinases are involved in the transfer of phosphate group from ATP to a substrate. Kinases are responsible for the addition of a phosphate group to a substrate. Phosphorylases transfer phosphate group from inorganic phosphate to a substrate. The next class is the hydrolases that involves the hydrolysis of a compound, then hydrolysis of a substrate using a molecule of water, as it can be seen in the reaction. Phosphatases removes phosphate group from a substrate. Phosphodiesterases cleaves phosphodiester bonds such as those in the nucleic acid. Proteases cleaves amino bonds such as those in the proteins. The next class is the lyase. Lyase involves addition or removal of a compound and results in formation or removal of a double bond. So decarboxylases produce carbon dioxide via elimination reactions. Aldolases produce aldehydes by elimination reactions and synthesis link the two molecules with the without the involvement of ATP molecule. The next major class is the isomerases that are involved in the interconversion of a substrate into its respective isomers. What are the isomers? Isomers are the compounds with same chemical formula but different arrangements. Racemases are involved in the interconversion of leeward rotatory and dextrorotatory stereoisomers into each other. Mutases transfer groups between atoms within a molecule. The next class is ligases that involves the bonding of two molecules. Carboxylases use carbon dioxide as a substrate and synthetases use ATP dependent reactions for linking of two substrates. So up till now we have discussed that enzymes are the biological catalyst that resembles somewhat to the chemical catalyst that are used in a chemical reaction. But they are some they have some different characteristics. That is they are made up of proteins. They show specificity towards a broad range of substrates. Their classification is somewhat different from the catalyst. They are classified into six major classes that include oxidoreductases, hydrolases, lyases, isomerases, and ligases. They are further divided into their subclasses for a specific type of substrate and a reaction they are catalyzing. I hope that today's lecture was informative for further lectures and updates please subscribe to the youtube channel online biology lectures 2020 thank you